Hi, I'm Birga. I work as a researcher here at NYU Abu Dhabi and as a psychologist, I study the quirks of people's mind. I will talk about why we sometimes want to suffer to achieve our goals. People spend hours on the treadmill, they get tattooed and pierced in sensitive places. They blow a ton of money on things they don't need to impress people that don't care. And for years I have been wondering why that may be. And today, I'd like to let you in on a little secret. I'd like to tell you why we sometimes choose to suffer. It is all because of one thing, one peculiar quirk of mind. It is because we think, if there's no pain, there's no gain. Let me start by telling you about something strange that happened in Dade County, Florida in the 70s. When laundry detergents containing phosphates were banned, people cleared the shelves. They stocked up large amounts, and they even started to smuggle the detergent from neighboring counties. Weird, right? But you might actually know this feeling, that the moment you are told you can't have something, you just want it so badly. This is why chocolate seems so especially delicious just when you started the diet. And this is why we cannot think about anything else but our next meal when our dentist tells us not to eat for half an hour. Throughout diverse fields, research has shown that instances of pain and suffering can actually result in positive experiences. And in the following, I'd like to give you a few examples. For instance, have you ever completed your workout in the gym and thought it was so effective because you are in pain? because you're so sore, yeah? <laughs> Participants in one of my research studies gave better ratings to a fitness program when it was advertised as painful. They thought it was more effective. But there are also other forms of pain besides physical pain. There's also psychological pain, such as humiliation. And some groups have their new potential members go through humiliating initiation rituals. This can happen in sororities or fraternities, where it is more commonly called hazing. And also hazing is generally a negative experience. As a consequence, the new member actually ends up liking the group more. And spending money can hurt too. Other researchers found that participants who were randomly assigned to pay more for an energy drink perceived this energy drink to be more effective in increasing mental capabilities than participants who were randomly assigned to pay less. And what was most remarkably in that study is that participants who paid more for the energy drink and drank it, they actually were better at solving puzzles than participants who paid less. And since energy drink recently became 50% more expensive here in the UAE, I guess it means we will have a bunch of geniuses soon. <laughs> Research has also found that spiritual rituals that are complicated are perceived as more effective than simple ones that only involve a few procedural steps. This is why in fairy tales, witches often have to go through a complicated procedure to brew their powerful potion. Seven anti-clockwise turns, four frog guys, you get the idea. In general, anything that demands effort from us will be perceived as an effective means to a goal. And that also results in us valuing things more when we had to put a lot of effort into them. For example, having to build your own furniture makes you value it more, which is fittingly called the IKEA effect. Having to stand in line for something makes us value more whatever we queued up for. For instance, a roller coaster ride in an amusement park or the newest iPhone. And also, having to wait for information makes us believe this information was more useful. I actually keep wondering if customer services have read all those research papers. <laughs> Think about it. From my experience, not only do they make you wait for information, they also torture you with the most annoying song they could find. When they finally decide to pick up the phone, they ask in the most humiliating way, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> it seems I'm not the only one who knows this pain. 
But jokes aside, all these examples show that we actually believe in the idea of no pain, no gain. But why is this the case? Why do we perceive our actions as effective when we have pain, discomfort, or monetary loss? Across all these examples, there's one common denominator. Whether they're experiencing physical or psychological pain, the moment we sacrifice important goals, we perceive our actions as effective. All these examples can be explained with one single theory, counterfinality. So what is counterfinality? Counterfinality is a specific configuration between a means and our goals. Counterfinality occurs when we try to attain one of our goals, but hurt another goal in the process. And when the second goal is negatively impacted, the cognitive link to goal one becomes stronger, and therefore we perceive the method, the means for attaining it, as more effective. I tested the theory of counterfinality in my own research, and I want to tell you about like, one study in particular that I conducted. For this study, I looked for people who have tattoos. And I asked them, why did you get your tattoo? And they listed various reasons. So for instance, they told me my goal was to look more attractive or to remember a certain life event or to rebel. And I also asked to what extent they thought they had attained those goals. And then I asked if getting tattooed was also hurtful to other goals they had. And again, I got various answers such as, yeah, now it is more difficult to date or to find a job or to make a career. But most interestingly, the more they thought that getting tattooed hurt their other goal, the more they believed it helped attaining their primary goal, the very goal they got tattooed for. And what is so important about this study is that the theory of counterfinality holds no matter what the actual content of the goal was. So independent of content, it was the mere configuration between a means, in this case getting tattooed, that helped attaining one goal, looking more attractive, at the expense of another goal, gaining employment, that lead us to perceive the means as more effective. For the very reason that another goal got hurt in the process. And in the same way, counterfinality can explain the other examples. Complicated rituals are counterfinal to the goal of convenience and therefore perceived as more effective. When dieting, eating chocolate goes against the goal of losing weight and is therefore perceived as more delicious, or in more technical terms, effective for the goal of food enjoyment. The higher priced energy drink hurts the goal of saving money and was therefore perceived as more effective in increasing mental capabilities. But enough theory. How can we put counterfinality to practical use? It was found in the medical field that Parkinson patients showed improved motor function when they thought the medication was more expensive. And if placebo effects like this can be achieved just by the inclusion of counterfinal information, such as side effects or bitter taste, then the quality of life of others can be improved at virtually no cost. The notion of no pain, no gain can also be used in marketing. I conducted an experiment in which I showed participants a mouthwash. And I had two groups of participants. One group learned that the mouthwash doesn't burn when winding. However, I told the other group that it causes a burning sensation. Which one would you prefer? Participants in my study liked the burning mouthwash. They thought it was more effective and therefore it was more in demand. These findings actually suggest for marketing to not always hide or downplay negative product attributes. And finally, the concept of counterfinality can also help us understand adherence to unhealthy routines. In yet another research study that I conducted, I asked students if they neglect any goals to study more intensely. And as a result, I found when students neglect important goals, such as exercising or spending time with friends and family, they actually perceive their studying routine to be more effective. And because they perceived their unhealthy routines to be so effective, they even wanted to maintain them. 
So it is not so much that we keep engaging in painful activities despite the negative consequences, but more so because of them. In understanding this, the concept of counterfinality can inform counseling and intervention strategies and help disenchant those unhealthy routines. So next time you are about to sacrifice some of your goals, stop and think. Maybe it is just an illusion of the mind. Maybe you can achieve the same with less pain. All these examples show that having to suffer for our goals makes us believe we will attain them. And this is why we sometimes want to suffer to achieve our goals. Thank you.